Whenever you build programs, sooner or later, you're going to want to store some data. Whether that's the user's name they've just typed in, some news stories you've just fetched from the internet, or perhaps the results of some complex calculation you've just finished running. Now, Swift gives us two ways to store data, depending on whether it should change over time or not. The first of these you're going to see because it's used automatically in new playgrounds. It looks like this. Var greeting equals hello playground. Now this creates a new variable called greeting. And because it's a variable, it can vary. Its value can change over time. Now the other line of code you're likely to see in your playground is this one here. Import Coco. This brings in a huge collection of code written by Apple, provided by Apple to make app building easier for us. It includes lots of really important functionality, so please don't delete it. Now, this code here really breaks down into four distinct pieces of syntax. The first is this var keyword, which means create a new variable. It saves some typing, var for variable. Then we're naming our variable greeting. You can call your variables and constants and more, whatever you want to. But generally, it should be a descriptive name. Next, we have an equal sign to assign a value to greeting. Here you can see there are spaces on either side of the equal sign. It's not required, but it's a very common style. And then we have an initial value to put into greeting, the text, hello playground. And you can see it has double quote marks at the start and end of that string. So Swift can see where the string starts and ends. Now, if you've used other languages previously, you might notice Swift does not end its lines of code with a semicolon. You can use them. Swift allows you to use them, but they're very, very rare. They're only really required if you ever want to put two lines of code on the same line for some reason but broadly, you won't use it. Now, when you make a variable, you're saying its value can change over time. I've got var name equals Ted. I can then change it by saying name equals Rebecca or name equals Keely. So we'll make a new variable called name, give it the value Ted, then change it twice, once to Rebecca and once to Keely. We don't keep on saying var, we use var only the first time. Remember, var means make a new variable. So it isn't needed for the second two lines of code here. And you can, of course, change variables as often as you want to. The old value is just discarded. Now, of course, you are welcome to put any text strings you want in there. I've used names from the TV show Ted Lasso. I'm a massive fan. Um, and yes, you are going to see lots of Ted Lasso references and, and more in future videos. But by all means, put your own text in there. Now, if you don't ever want to change a value, you've got to use a constant instead. Creating a constant works almost the same as making a variable, except now we say let rather than var. So here's let character equals Daphne. So we're saying this is a value that must never change. It should always be equal to Daphne. Swift literally won't let us change it. And I'll show a big error if you try and change it. If you don't believe me, try it in a playground. I have one right here with our current code. I can say let character equals Daphne. And I'll try and change it. I'll say uh, character equals Eloise or character equals Francesca, like that. And again, there are no let lines, uh, let words here on the second two lines because we aren't making new constants. We're just trying to change the current constant. But like I said, bang, big red text. You cannot do that. It is not allowed to change constants. Swift will refuse. You can't change constants. Otherwise, they wouldn't be constants. If you're curious, let comes from mathematics world where they say things like, let X be equal to five. Let character be equal to Daphne. Now, before we continue, please delete these two broken lines of code. Trust me, you really cannot change constants. Now, when you're learning Swift, it's common to want to ask Xcode what's inside a variable. 
print me out the value of the variable. And you won't use it much in real apps, apart from occasional debugging, because your users can't see what's printed. It just goes to Xcode's debug area and nothing else. But as a learner, it's a great way to see what's inside your code, what's inside your values right now. For example, we could print out the value of a variable every time it's changed. Try entering this into your playground. Var player name equals Roy. Print player name. Then player name equals Danny. Print player name. Then player name equals Sam. Print player name. Now to run your playground back, look for this blue and white play icon on the left hand edge of your code where the line numbers are. As you move up and down, you'll see the arrow follows you. You can play back at any number of lines you want or go to the very end and press play to there to play all the code. In our case, I'll press play here on line 18 to play all my code and see what happens. Boom. You can see immediately Roy, Danny and Sam are being printed out in Xcode's debugging area at the bottom, telling us what's happened. Now you might notice I named my variable player name all one word with a capital N and that's intentional. I didn't use player name with a lowercase n or player underscore name or something else. That's intentional. I mean, honestly, Swift does not care what you name your variables and constants. You can do what you want, as long as you use the same name everywhere. So if I had player name here with a capital N, I can't then say player name down here with a lowercase n. Swift will see those two things as being different. You can see it's fight saying it, warning me in big letters, I can't find player name. Go to the same case. Now, although Swift doesn't care how we name our variables and constants, the style you're seeing here is a standard among Swift developers and beyond, what we call a coding convention. If you're curious, this particular coding convention is called camel case, because it starts off small and then has little humps as you hit new words, little capital letters. The second and subsequent words should all be capitalized. So if I had some more examples down here, I might say, uh, let manager name be equal to Michael Scott. Again, capital N in man and name. Uh, and then let dog breed equal Samoyed. I have two Samoyeds. I've got one sleeping next to me, but I'm sure she might say hello if I get a treat out for her. Come on, you. Come on, come show me what a Samoyed looks like. Come on, work for it. <laughs> you good dog. Yeah. Samiet, there you go. <laughs> and then we have uh, let meaning of life be how many roads must a man walk down. Uh, and again, capital O, capital L in meaning of life. Now, broadly speaking, uh, you wanna try and stick to these conventions. They, they do matter. They make your code easier to work with other people and more. Also, if possible, Try to prefer using constants over variables as much as you can. Not only does it give Swift a chance to optimize your code better, so it can see values will never change, but it also allows Swift to stop you from changing values by accident.